that. Here we go. Okay, finally, part three. Um, first of all, if you haven't caught up with the other two, even though there was an extensive break between part one, part two, and today, part three, I'm going to ask you to go back to part one. That's uh, got some preemptive disclosure, sort of not disclosure, um, you know, um, a warning. <laughs> some of the discussions here are going to be very triggering for a lot of people. Um, go back and watch the first part, then the second part, then come back and watch this one, uh, as you'll get to know what's going on and then you won't be so out of the blue. Um, we're using a couple of short forms as is listed in the document itself, um, ATS and um, HH. Uh, above top secret member and hidden hand and these are the two individuals that are interacting with each other somebody puts on the hat of an ATS member and for the privacy of that individual um, the names have been stricken from the record although the name there there is a couple of names if I recall that hid, the hidden hand says in public but they're um, handles within the above top secret forum and so they're not directly somebody's name um, if you wish, you can check out the comments for more information on where you can find this, uh, as well as the background story for it. It will also include the links to the first two videos as well within the description, um, and the link once I get it up to part four and part five. Um, planning to do it in part four and part five. Part three, part four, and part five are longer than one and two, so we'll see how that goes. They might get broken down into two parts. Depends on how long I get with my daughter. Uh, excuse the wonderful mess, it's been so long to upload and continue this because of accommodation issues, not really issues, just moving and, you know, life <laughs> stuff, you know, so I don't have my pretty backdrop and uh, I don't have the ability to do it in the same format that I was, so here we have a slightly different format. However, let's continue, it's the content that matters. This is amazing content, but for the first part here, um, yes, this is a dialogue with the hidden hand, the self-proclaimed Illuminati inside. This document was assembled by Wes Penry, published in the Illuminati News on December 27, 20, 2008. Now, this goes into the description and the brief um, talk before the actual content. As you can see, it goes into a little bit of a... Uh, into a little bit of a description about what's going on here and how this came to be and then he starts from here we've already done the first and second session so if i recall we're somewhere in the ballpark of 25 26 could be let's have a look must have passed it Third session, okay. So above top secret member starts off. I'm wondering if you can help me. My name is Shelby David, and I am here for the coming trials and tribulations. I am part of Quetzcoatl. FYI, uh, my pronunciations might be way off the ballpark and the left end, too bad. <laughs> Just consider it comedy. Uh, <laughs> I am part of Quetzalcoatl, uh, or the rebirth of it. As far as I know, I know many of your words to be true because I had already rediscovered these truths through finding that which resonated most with me through the various belief structures of this planet. <coughs> oh, the tornadoes. Anyway, um... I'd already re rediscovered most of this through various belief structures already on this planet. Hidden Hand replies, Good evening, Shelby. It is good to see you again, you know, on account of the keyboard thing. It has been a while, old friend. Would it surprise you to know that we were expecting you? Quetzalcoatl is also a sixth density group soul, or a social memory complex. Some refer to Quetzalcoatl as an ascended master, although he would be most amused by that title, knowing as he does that mastery is still some way off at this point for him, as well as it is for ourselves as group soul Lucifer. One can be accurately described as having mastered a particular density, 
though mastery of an entire creational incarnation cycle does not occur until one has again attained submergence back into the one infinite creator. We may choose to do so once attaining eighth density ascension or once may or one may choose instead to progress up to the next octave of densities and begin a new cycle of creational incarnational challenge challenges. Now that's going into the first density of the next octave. ATS member, this is my first time on earth in a long time, possibly ever. I have known for quite some time and been told by another from one of the bloodlines in your group that I do not truly exist here, hidden hand. You are correct in that you have not been here for a substantial period of Earth time, though not that you have never been here before. The group Soul Quetzalcoatl enjoyed many third density incarnational cycles here back in the classic Aztec period. He struggled at first with performing love, love for others, which held back his progression for some time. However, once he had come to the realization of our inherent unity, he was also able to see himself in others, and his your progression was rapid from there on in. Your Quetzalcoatl soul group attained positive harvest with a very impressive 76% at the time of the subsequent harvest. Naturally, when a group soul is undergoing an incarnational cycle in third density, its individualized soul portions, i.e. you, are the ones who are doing the actual physical incarnations with the oversoul or the higher self of your individuated souls acting as the energy anchor in which the individual soul sparks are stepped down from. You spent a long while working your way through the fifth density, the density of wisdom or light. This was due to the main part, this was due in the main part to an overabundance of compassion which isn't a bad thing, as compassion is one of the main things you work on in fourth density. However, to graduate from fifth to sixth, the density of unity, one must learn to balance that compassion with wisdom. The sixth density is hence sometimes known as the density of compassionate wisdom. Due to one having learnt the balance between the two, this required many incarnational cycles for you, which is why you correctly feel that you have not visited third density earth for a long time. ATS member, I was not, I was not expecting, I was not expected to show up, sorry. I originally had other previous engagements, but I managed to get here at the last minute. One of the things I've remembered is that I am too under contract and uh, sorry, I am a walk-in, if that makes sense to you, so my human family is not like me. I have spent a long time traveling to various densities and helping in various revolutions there. Hidden hand, your insight serves you well, Shelby. This not only applies to you, but your entire soul group. Quetzalcoatl, the macrocosm of yourself, has been busy for the last two cycles, working with a fifth density group on Alpha Centauri who were experiencing similar problems with an overabundance of compassion at the cost of personal wisdom. You recently completed your assignment there and were eager not to miss out on the glorious opportunity to be part of this great harvest. Whilst your group, as I said, did eventually learn to balance love and light to graduate into sixth density unity vibration, you still are very much prone to extreme compassion, and rather than take the usual period of time space, that is, antimatter universe, where we rest in between incarnations, you were keen to jump aboard this third density space time whirlwind at this point to be of assistance to your fellow beings here. Now, I plan to do some videos and explore that on a much larger concept that the time space, not space time, that time space is an antimatter universe where the, we rest in between incarnations. That's a very big discussion. Moving on. ATS, my problem is that my memory has malfunctioned and some of the things that I have remembered from my previous existences do not correspond with your words. I have met Lucifer and his generals on more than one occasion. I would appreciate inf any information you may know of that could clear up any confu my confusions as to why my thoughts were so jumbled, because I know what my path is clearly and I am awaiting the starting point. 
but I am not completely clear on what truly is happening here. Thank you for your time. In hand, you have indeed met with us, Lucifer, before on many occasions. We have worked together on various council and confederation assignments. Use the gift of your dream time communications, which are important communications from your oversoul, and many other sources whereby information is downloaded, to plug in to your inner data bank. Begin recording everything you recall upon awakening and do not give up on the process, even though it is hard at first. You will begin to slowly make sense of the information which is being downloaded into your subconscious mind. When you become proficient at this, you can use your dream time as a method of inner communication. Ask our infinite creator to remind you of your time in Zeta Reticuli system. In the Zeta Reticuli system, you will remember then the last period of service that we had together. I would hope with much fondness. Sadly, my time here is only permitted until Friday, therefore we will not likely communicate again after this message. So I wish you the very best with your assignment here, my friend, both your individual one and that of your group soul. I ask that our infinite creator bless and guide your path. We look forward to seeing you again on the other side when this grand ride is over. Our love, wisdom and peace be with you. ATS member, you mentioned Alcyon. It's interesting that there's a celestial map of it at Hoover Dam. There's also a compass framed by signs of the zodiac. Hidden hand, indeed, just like in Hollywood productions, we hide the truth right out in the wide open. What humanity is offered as science fiction, more often than not, is actually science fact. ATS member, what do the winged statues commissioned by the US government guarding the entrance to the dam really represent? Is any of this collection of celestial symbolism found there connected to your Luciferian alien equinox transformation agenda? Hidden hand, that is actually very simple. You'll note that the feet pointed directly downward toward the earth and the hands and the wingtips pointed directly up to the sky the life force energy flows into the human mind body soul complex from the earth up through the feet the intelligent energy from the infinite creator flows down from above and in through the crown chakra the wings represent our lucifer's inherent divinity you'll also note that the figure is seated the seat of our lucifer's power connects heaven and earth and all things must pass through us Other questions I have, and sorry if you've explained this, are these bloodlines the wealthy as most assume or seemingly ordinary people, including celebrities and politicians, etc., blending in with society, going relatively unnoticed, but yet contributing to your cause in the grander scheme of things? In hand, the names you know have no real power. Emphasized. Sure, they appear to have lots of power in the way earthbound souls perceive power. Our wealth makes the million and billionaire celebs and corporate bigwigs look like a child's pocket money. Our wealth is family wealth, which has passed down through the generations over thousands of years. True wealth, however, is knowing deep in your heart that you and your infinite creator are one. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, or the infinite creator, and all these things shall be added unto you. ATS. So part of this question could also be, are all of them aware they have a part in this bloodline, or are some members oblivious to the connection they have? Are they informed of this at a particular age? For example, how and what age were you told that you belonged? In hand, yes, if you are bloodline, family, you are born into it and you are raised this way from birth. There is no other way. I want to be clear on this bloodline issue. The ones you know, they are of earthly lineage. Yes, they have their place in the family, but the real power lines do not originate from this planet. ATS, I have probably found this the single most insightful thing so far. It helps me to understand the answers to some of the questions I've asked. Hidden hand, I am glad. It is 
the probably it is probably the single most important thing that I have shared. ATS, unfortunately, the connotations also alleviate the NWO of most accusations. NWO definition. That depends upon your perspective, says Hidden Hand. Does it alleviate the negativity we have perpetuated? No. Does it alleviate the pain and the suffering we have caused and are causing on this planet? No. Does it alleviate that we are closing our endgame scenario and soon to openly come out and offer publicly to save the failing political and financial institutions with our esteemed leadership? No. Does it mean that you should give in to and feed the negativity? No. Does it alleviate that we will have to spend a cycle in karmic restitution to balance this lifetime of overt negativity added in for emphasis placed on you? No, they're still going to have to pay for it. Does it mean that you should use this negativity as a tool that it is to show you that which you are not? Yes. Remember always that this is a beautiful game that we are playing here and co-creating together with our infinite creator and that off stage or between lives we are the very best of friends and that no one really dies and no one really suffers except in this game. The game is not reality. Reality is reality. And you have the power to express your reality within the game once you have learned how to do so. ATS, you are essentially saying that a soul can only choose positivity in a world where negativity also exists. If there were no protagonist in this world, there'd be no opportunity for the human soul to choose good or evil, and thus prove on a spiritual level that they deserve one afterlife fate over another. If we only had positivity to choose from, we'd learn nothing and our souls would manage to prove nothing. Exactly confirms Hidden Hand. This is the reason why we came. It was a great sacrifice for us, hard as it is to comprehend from within the mental confines of third density life experience. We do it because we love you. Triggering. <laughs> an extremely basic concept, says an ATS member, but one I'd so far managed to overlook. Unfortunately, for those of us who love our earthly existence, or rather the potential it has, it's rather difficult to come to terms with a concept whereby suffering and slavery are as natural as love and happiness, and that only after this earthly existence can we ever be free. I understand, goes on hidden hand. Our job is to provide the catalyst. Yours is to use it. Can you look beyond what your eyes are showing you to find and express love and happiness in a world of fear and distress? If you can, you will be a beacon of light into the darkness. Will you succumb to the darkness or will you stand and shine your divine inner light? Only you can make that decision for yourself. Think about this. If the one infinite creator is infinite, and has created everything that is, which it is and it has, then does the infinite creator not reside within all things? When you can see the divine spark of the infinite creator, even within those who would mean you harm, the strong grip of the illusion will begin to lose its power over you. Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you." End quote. ATS, thank you, Hidden Hand. Whether you're genuine or not, you've certainly got me thinking and learning. Hidden hand, you're very welcome. I am genuine, but would it matter if I were not? Remember, it is not the messenger. It is not who the messenger is that is of the greatest import, but rather it is the nature of the message itself. I wish you well on the journey home. We will see you on the other side. And we'll all have a good old laugh about the parts we've played in this grand drama. ATS member, is there any way to cancel this restriction? Because I could be just very lazy or under this kind of spell and want to know which one it is. 
does sleep paralysis have anything to do with it? Because I get that from time to time with or without shadow figures. Because I could just because I could be just very lazy or under this kind of spell and want to know which one it is. I'm not sure what that first part of the question is about. <clears throat> there is. Sorry. Is there any way to cancel this restriction? Okay. There is a way to cancel the restriction. Research and employ psychic shielding techniques. There is much information on the internet, so I need not spend the little time we have left going into that. Read many sites and listen to your inner voice. Your soul will guide you if you ask it. It speaks in the language of feelings. When it feels right, usually it is. Your soul... I'm going to reiterate that. Your soul speaks in the language of feelings. Okay? No, sleep paralysis is unrelated. That occurs when your brain awakes from the dream state before your body whilst going through REM deep sleep. It is natural for your body to become paralyzed during the REM cycle so as to prevent possible injury whilst dreaming. Sometimes when you awake too quickly from a dream, your body just thinks you are still dreaming and thus the REM paralysis continues for a while, usually until you shake yourself awake, often due to the difficulty to breathe. ATS, and another question, is it possible that our essence can be destroyed in the coming times or is that just another scare tactic? This is an important question. Pay close attention. Hidden hand? No. Your essence can never be destroyed. You are a unique part of the one infinite creator. You are an eternal soul currently residing in a physical shell that you could call an earth suit. Your earth suit will perish, but you, you cannot die. Nothing can destroy the infinite creator and you and the infinite creator are one. ATS, I go to work to pay my bills. I live a good life with friends, loved ones, people I care about. I am essentially a good person, but I do have a full range of emotions as a real human, i.e. jealousy, hate, etc. I guess I would describe myself as lukewarm, to use your phrase. How can I as an individual take what you say as the truth? <laughs> Hidden hand. No one is asking you to. Never take what another says to you as truth. Your purpose here is to find your own truth. Sometimes others can help you to do so by offering guidance, but for their truth to become your truth, it must pass through the test of your discernment. Sit quietly in meditation and ask the infinite creator to guide your path. Meditate upon that which I have shared and listen to your inner feelings. They are the language of your soul. Use all your negative emotions as they arise, as the tools that they truly are. Train yourself to notice when negativity arises in you. Watch you catch, when, sorry, when you catch yourself projecting a negative thought, remember that all thought is creative and ask yourself if that is really what you want to create. It takes a while to become proficient, but do not give up. Just keep noticing your negative thought patterns as they arise, and in doing so, simply choose again and select a response that is more positive. It is called working on yourself and is the main reason you have chosen to be here right now. To work upon yourself, I wish you well in your transformation process. ATS, I also read through the above link from one calling themselves the insider, although his, her posts were less sophisticated than yours. Was he your predecessor, one of your ilk charged with this disclosure? <laughs> Hidden hand, a good question. I have just read through that material. It was very interesting. No, not a predecessor of mine and not a disclosure I was previously aware of, which had it come from my family would be highly strange. Though I note that he himself stated that he is from a minority and certain clues within his writing give me a very good idea which one. I would say his material is around 60% accurate. The feelings I get from reading him are not that he intentionally included inaccurate information, but that he was just not in possession of the bigger picture. 
were he to be from the minority group I'd believe him to be from, that would make perfect sense. ATS member. So when the harvest comes, my time here is over, and this conscious shall and this conscious shall I live in is no more. What then? What happens to me? What happens to my friends and loved ones? Are we, and by we I mean the vast vast majority of us who possess this planet, this dimension, this density, by and large going to be ignorant of the events you foretell? This is a good question, says Hidden Hand. I like questions that come from the heart. It depends upon the circumstances surrounding your final moments of this particular lifetime. For example, let us say that the physical aspect of you was to do the thing called die during the coming earth changes. You will immediately return to that wondrous realm in which we reside in between incarnations, that which we call time space or antimatter. They're literally just dropping bombs all over the place here. This is the place that humans refer to as heaven. There you shall meet with all those you love who have also died during this life experience and enjoy a wonderful and emotional reunion. You will meet up with your soul group and your spiritual teachers. We all store a portion of your, our soul energy on the other side when we come here. Depending upon the difficulty level of the life experience we've chosen, we take more or less of our energy with us. For an average lifetime, we typically bring between 60 and 80% of our soul energy into our incarnation with us. Therefore, even if ones you love who are already back in the world of spirit have incarnated again on another adventure, they will still be part of the energy there will still be part of their energy there to meet with you and welcome you home. You will then evaluate your life experience with your teachers and learn the lessons of your successes and your mistakes. You will then spend time in learning and resting before beginning to plan your next incarnation. For those who do not physically die before the great harvest arrives, there will be a moment of zero point time where you will enjoy an ecstatic merging with the infinite creator, giving you a wonderful reminder and reassurance of who and what you really are before the veil of forgetfulness once again descends upon you and you will be transported to the place that awaits you, depending upon whether you join us in fourth density negative, unlikely, graduate to fourth density positive, possible, or go to another similar third density planet for the lukewarms, to continue in the learning for however many cycles it takes you to graduate to the fourth density positive. Those in this category will not remember anything at the time of your transition. It will be just like nothing has changed, except you will retain the memory of your zero point experience to encourage you. You will not remember the recent experiences of the harvest in this life here. It will be just as though you all had some mystical experience and life will continue as normal for you. Now, that's a terrifying concept. Like, how do you know that that isn't what happened last night? And you woke up thinking that everything was normal for you? <laughs> anyway. ATS, I find you difficult to believe, and yet you respond and inform in a very sophisticated manner. It is quite intriguing. Hidden hand, that is good. I do not want for you to blindly believe me. Too many on this planet spend their entire lifetime doing and thinking things others say that they are true. What I want is that my words become a catalyst for you. That is what we came here to do. If my words cause you, even if just for a short time, to stop for a moment and evaluate that which you think you already know about the nature of life and take for granted as being true because everyone believes it, then my time will have been well spent. My desire is that you become an authentic human being, thinking and feeling and deciding for yourself what feels like truth for you. I wish you well in your endeavours. ATS member, you can't provide one shred of proof that this isn't a hoax, even though it would be incredibly easy to do so, were you who you claim you were. Hidden hand, won't, not can't, big difference. 
This is not intended to be an object lesson prophecy an sorry. This is not intended to be an object lesson prophecy fulfillment in prophecy fulfillment. If you think I thought that I would be blindly believed or even wanted for that to happen, you are very much mistaken. I would be disappointed if that were to be the case, for you will all have learned nothing from my time here. Not you personally, I mean you as in people in general. My task here as has been my task incarnating here for thousands of years is to provide a catalyst to make you think again, not you personally, I mean, in general, if I were to give you the proof that you were looking for, if I were to predict things and tomorrow they all happen before your very eyes, people would likely take everything I've said here as gospel. That would be disastrous were that to occur because you will have learned nothing for yourselves. It's not about me. I'm just a messenger. It's all about you. Again, generally speaking, you. And what you do in relation to the catalyst. Question what you think you know about reality. Seek the infinite creator within you and ask for its guidance. Ask and you shall receive. Search and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened unto you. ATS, I'm a 32nd degree Mason, although if you were really a royal bloodline person, you would know that it means nothing. Hidden hand, if you haven't genuinely attained the level of sublime prince of the royal secret through the Scottish Rite or that of the Order of the Knights Templar, through the York Rite, and have not been taught of the truths of creation, then I would be very interested indeed to know which area lodge you attend, as I would very much like to speak with your current worshipful master. Naturally, I completely understand and respect if you do not wish to make such personal details known publicly, though. Of course, what you said in another post about there only being three degrees is true, for those attending the blue or craft lodges though as you've stated that you are 32nd degree i'm presuming you're either scottish right or york's right equivalent i hope to be able to be present personally in the event that you are ever invited to progress beyond the 33rd degree i would like to be the one tasked with introducing you to lucifer i expect you will likely come back and say how there is no further progressing beyond the 33rd well, if you're lucky, there will be a nice surprise in store for you. Somewhere down the line, I sincerely hope that make it that far. Hope that you make it that far. ATS, that your repeating debunked conspiracy theory shows you are just here to hoax. Says Hidden Hand. That word debunked always brings me a hearty laugh. Ho, ho, ho. Some people seem to think that throwing the word debunked around means that it really has been. Pfft, the vast majority of debunking has more holes in it than the conspiracy theory itself. It's meant to be silencing, just enough of a shell to help those who really don't want to see the truth to be true, to carry on believing that it's not, so they can replace their heads back into the sand for a little while longer. Anyway, I must press on with questions from those with open minds. I leave you with my regards. Keep up your good work. ATS, over the course of my life, I have occasionally resorted to prayer, some formal and some not, with truly astounding and nearly instant physical results. I've taken these results to heart as personal evidence that some higher force or forces can respond in a meaningful manner to at least me and perhaps to anyone. Still, I don't rule out the possibility of coincidence. From my, from your vantage point, would you please be gracious enough to shed light on this phenomena? Hidden hand, there is no such thing as coincidence. Nothing happens by chance. Life is a constant process of communication with us, only mostly people are too busy to notice. Our infinite creator longs to be close to us. In truth, he is closer than most would believe. They just don't notice him. As they pass him on the street every day, when he gives them their change at the shop, when you tuck her into bed and give her a kiss goodnight, 
when you squash him as he's running up your bathroom wall towards his web, when there's no one else in the room but you. The main reason people don't have their prayers answered is because they do not really believe that they will, don't have faith in our infinite creator, have trust in him. The most powerful form of prayer is thanksgiving, for even before you ask, I have already given it unto you. Thanksgiving is knowing that our infinite creator has provided for you as he promised and being thankful for that, even before you see the results. The more we trust in our creator, the more results we get. Life gives us what we expect we'll receive, because all thought is creative. If we get up and expect to have a bad day, more often than not, that's exactly what we'll get. But remember that it works both ways. ATS. And this one would be the hoaxer's sock puppet. New name, all posts in this thread acting as the coach for OP created to give him or her the aura of credibility, says another ATS member. Some people are so smart, except, oh dear, you really are desperately clutching at straws. Any admin can have the power to see I'm not using multiple accounts. I would be more than happy for an admin to say if I am, because I am not. Two accounts will show for me, hidden hand with a hyphen, my first one that I never got the confirmation email for, and this one, hidden underscore hand. The one I did get the confirmation for. My infinite creator gives me the only credibility that I need, or that I want, for that matter. ATS Hidden Hand, I've enjoyed reading your posts, if for nothing than the unusual, for ATS whistleblowers anyway. Fact that it isn't bullet holed with bad writing, grammar and typos, may I respectfully recommend that you choose another venue next time. I like Project Camelot myself. In any case, I'm still reading with an open mind, but sceptical mind. Thank you. We were aware of Project Camelot. They are doing some remarkable work. Though I was not aware, they also have a forum. Is that what you're suggesting? Not really my area, usually, dealing with the internet. In fact, I, have, I rarely have time to even venture onto it. I have quite enjoyed this time of relating to others over cyberspace. Well, if you're game for an assignment, or maybe someone else, if you haven't the time, give rise to the book, I would be happy for someone to collate this topic, minus the interruptions, so that the message appears with just the actual flow of questions and answers and posted there in one piece. If you so desire. As I mentioned before, I chose ATS as I was reliably informed that it is one of the forums with a higher rate of intelligence and reasoning amongst its members. On the whole, from my experience here, I would tend to agree. Though if you think it would be of value to Camelot, by all means you are most welcome to spread this message. The more people it can reach, the better. ATS I have very few dreams nowadays, but I had one last night and it urged me to pose a question to you. I find it amusing that out of all the topics the universe has to offer, it offers me this. Nothing but, nothing by chance, sir. Nothing by chance. Dreams are a key method our souls use to speak with us, goes on hidden hand. The conscious mind is too busy and distracted most of the time to hear what spirit has to say. So it tends to use the subconscious instead. The ATS, hidden hand, I have for my whole life searched near and far for answers to questions. When I read your words, I am compelled with, from within to explore their complete meanings and truthfulness. I am forced to examine them to the fullest, and I am charged with comparing them to the truth within me. Hidden hand, that is precisely the way that it should be. Again, I would encourage you not to just blindly accept what I say is truth. It never was my intention that anyone should make such an error in judgment, belief in somebody else, an error in judgment. That is not to say that my words are not true, but that one must weigh them up, meditate on them, and decide for yourself in the light of your intuition and inner feelings whether or not these words feel truth for you. ATS, hidden hand, my question I pose to you with the greatest respect and humility who will you stand before when we are call, all called home? Hidden hand, we shall stand as we all shall, before our one infinite creator. 
we already know that which awaits us in our coming fourth density negative polarity world, we shall have to experience the negativity of our own creation and know what it feels like. We shall have to work off the karmic effect of our actions, but at the same time, knowing that this is a beautiful and intricate game that we are all co-creating here together, we also know that we shall be rewarded with a hearty thank you and a job well done for the sacrifice we have made in bringing this negative polarity into your game for you, that you may use it wisely to see that which you are not. Thank you for your question. We wish you all the best and ask our infinite creator to bless your path. ATS, as you will be leaving this Friday, I would be interested in finding verification for other possible sources of information and for this knowledge. You have mentioned the Ra channelings, but I also see some similarities in three other sources which have been discussed in this and other forums on the internet. I would appreciate your evaluation of the information coming from these sources in the light of your messages. They are ASIM, A Course in Miracles, allegedly channeled by the Christos, the Edgar Casey material in which the Ra entity may have played a part, and the Terror Papers. Can those of us seeking to continue our understanding of these matters find anything of use from these sources? Hidden hand, ASIM has some core truths within it, mainly along the lines of the law of radiation and attraction, but it is also littered with inaccuracies. I am not aware of the terror papers. Edgar Casey's work is significant. There are many distortions within it, but for ones who are of a discerning mind, there is much strong meat to be ingested from its reading. Keep an open mind, but weigh it all up, as you should any philosophy that you allow to enter into the sacred space of your mind and take the truths that resonate with you. ATS, also you mentioned two prior contacts, 1999 and 2003. Can you shed some more light and specifics on those sources, as I assume they are not to be considered privileged to those who ask? Unfortunately, pardon me, unfortunately that is beyond my remit. The 2003 material was removed by the Adam, uh, by the admins, Adams, by the admins of this site. It was shared at, as they felt it was causing too much controversy, and the 1999 material was not released for the same reasons as that which I am sharing here. There was much truth within it, but our goals have changed in many ways since that time, and it would be misleading for me to point you in its direction now. In fact, I have been specifically instructed by my own upline not to do so. I am sorry. ATS, thank you for your assistance. Namaste. Hidden hand, you are welcome, and that is a wonderful word to have ended your communication with. If one would genuinely live by its essence, by its essence that is, to recognize and honor the divine spark within each of us, we would be in for a massive positive harvest. Namaste to you too. We ask that our infinite creator blesses you and guides your path. ATS, I wonder if Hidden Hand has read something called Law of One. I've only picked through it, having just stumbled on it after reading these posts, but it reminds me but it reads remarkably similar to Hidden Hand's responses here. Website. So this is the hoax source, or is that book instead the truth? Maybe Hidden Hand could respond. So is this the hoax source, or is that book instead the truth? Maybe Hidden Hand could respond. Hidden Hand, I have already made reference to this, the raw material, earlier in this topic session two if i recall as i stated then yes it is the most accurate public information available in this world currently and i strongly recommend its reading to anyone with an inquiring mind i read some but not all of the books when they first came out some 25 years or so ago and it is very similar to the knowledge my family has and have passed down for many many generations it is approximately 85 to 90 percent accurate the inaccuracies occurred when the channel was weak and were not intentional. 
We know Ra, the entity, very well and are happy that they are even now still working here on this planet behind the scenes to prepare for the Great Harvest. I think I'm up to date with your questions now. If I have missed any that are not unimportant ones, such as what car I drive, for example, then please let me know. We have two sessions left together, and then I must take my leave. We'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow. And that's the end of the third um, one. So this is fascinating for many reasons, let alone um, for many reasons, like many. Um, like time, space, antimatter, um, everything else, and everything else, <laughs> and all of those other things too. They were fascinating. I think I think the ability to be able to take and receive information from any source and to be able to dissect it and diagnose it as your own to then use it as your own is basically the essence of what we're doing here on a much larger scale than we might give credit for. Think about the things that your parents taught you, you know, you run around your life repeating and spitting out word for word verbatim everything that everybody's told you until you actually become an adult, go out and make these same mistakes yourself. And once you make the same mistakes yourself and go through the same pain and the same suffering that most everyone has been through in various areas of their life, through variable circumstances, everybody goes through different circumstances, everybody's life is different, but the themes, I mean, how many people have dealt with jealousy? How many people have dealt with anger, frustration, not feeling enough, victimhood, um, having... Uh, you know, the, the desire to power over somebody for their own good. You know, we've all had many of these experiences and these emotions in our variable lives and whatever patterns they come out in. Beautiful fractals of one another. But to be able to remember that those out there who we think are bad don't necessarily demand our hatred is, I think, a very important lesson because it correlates with what we're doing as we're moving forward you know there's more and more people born all the time and every time there's a crime committed there's people who come out of the crime as victims who become perpetrators of some kind or another that's exactly what a victim is is a cause of the next line unless that victim chooses to be otherwise by not being a victim by not being a cause for more victimhood to take place not not for revenge not for justice and that's what we get caught in it's hard but i've got to get justice i've got to get a certain amount back for the crimes that have been done against me that sounds like revenge that sounds like i have a debt that needs to be repaid you owe me i would much prefer to see a world where we all moved on grew expanded and didn't allow these things to happen anymore instead of repeated them again and again and told the next generation not to do the same mistake that we know that we're making right now. Do as I say and not as I do is a common one in our society. And it just doesn't work because this external reality that we're a part of, this idea of reward and punishment, this separate existence, that one can be forced into doing good instead of choosing it through their own inner insight is astoundingly persistent and only lasts and only sticks while somebody is locked in some fear state of some kind or another. If you can drop that fear state, if you can return to that state of what they say is inner love and inner peace and inner acceptance, then you can begin to see how if all we do for the future is keep turning back on ourselves to get the people who are causing problems instead of moving forward to create new solutions, then you can see that all we're going to do is go around in circles because we're chasing our own tail. Every head at the beginning of a new option or a new choice goes, you know what, instead of making a new choice for a new world, I'm going to turn back on myself 
and continue the cycle of trauma on somebody else. I'll get around to the fourth part as soon as I can. Again, all of the bits and pieces will be in the comments. If you get to this video early and they're not there yet, be patient. I'm only one man. Ah, in this wonderful reality that we call home. As we are. The one infinite creator. Manifesting as its own expression in this divine creation that we call this world. May peace be with you and your family and your friends and everyone around you. May you see the lessons that are present within you and embrace them with love so as to not hurt yourself thinking that it's somebody else. Till next time.